and uh, let us all sit in the process of God with a prayerful attitude this morning. Uh, listen, you know, uh, as we have the the uh, Sunday school anniversary today, I was just thinking about preaching something related to the youth and the kids of our church. Something related to the youth and the kids of our church, maybe the teenagers also. You know, uh, the topic that uh, the title is the Christian youth in a compromising world. Christian youth in a compromising world world yeah it's there christian youth in a compromising world you know um i was just thinking about this thing uh for a few months because this thought came into my mind there's a reason for that also you know i was preaching uh maybe two years ago i was preaching a particular topic called uh, um influential youth of the bible right influential uh, youth of the Bible, and I was preaching uh, that for maybe for a few months uh, on the uh, youth Sundays, on the youth Sundays, and later I just found that, okay, it is not better, it is not good to preach uh, the, the ser only the sermon for the, for the youth on the, uh, I mean, uh, youth Sunday, uh, because uh, different um, I mean, age people are coming in our church, and, uh, you know, in that Sunday preaching only for the youth. And I thought, okay, I will change that. And uh, I started to preach uh, some other messages on the uh, Youth Sunday also. But, uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, uh, I was just thinking about, I mean, how can we reach out these students or these, uh, I mean, children or this youth? And how can we, I mean, deliver or how can we convey the Bible messages to these people? And I, the, the thought came into my mind was, you know, at least on the Sunday school anniversary Sunday, we can do that. Okay, only on the Sunday school anniversary Sunday. And I mean, about that, let me uh, uh, request to the board members that you know, if you could, uh, if you could, uh, I mean, make some of the, the the special meetings for our kids and uh, uh, for the youth in the coming days. You know, special meeting means you know, only with the youth and only with the the kids and the teenagers. Okay, for them. Eh? VPS. So VPS is for the Sunday school kids. You know, we, we need to focus uh, uh, our youth also. We need to focus our um, teenagers, and we need to I mean make some arrangements for them that you know uh, they will get something. You know, they have many challenges in their lives. So let us have that program. Maybe if if they are busy and if they are busy with their studies and uh, their job and everything, so let us let us pray for them and let us have them. In a, in a Zoom meeting also, we can arrange that, okay? If we are spending few money for that also, that is worth, okay? So, let us uh, work for that. And we know that we have the uh, uh, youth class in the morning. At the same time, having a special meeting for the youth and the kids, it will be a great blessing for them. And they have some challenges and they have some many, so many questions are there, you know. That, that was the reason, one of the reasons that we called, uh, uh, I mean, Brother Prem Kumar last, uh, for the la last retreat. You know, our youth were having many questions and they were, I mean, asking to uh, Pastor, I mean, Prem Kumar and he was giving the answer for them and they were, they were so satisfied with that. I mean, so at the same time, why can't we make some, uh, I mean, occasions, okay, why can't we make some uh, uh, particular sessions of, uh, uh, I mean, teaching or preaching or uh, interaction, interaction section for uh, the, the students and the, and the youth of our church. You no, know, that will, that will be a blessing for them. So let us have that in the coming days and uh, I believe that, uh, you know, that will be a great blessing for them. And even, you know, when I was uh, uh, attending in the ICPF meeting in San Jose last two weeks ago, you know, uh, that, is, that is one of the reasons that I took uh, this uh, uh, message, this, uh, I mean, topic this morning for the, for the service. You know, when we were discussing there, you know, afternoon, we had a discussion meeting uh, with uh, the pastors and the brothers, maybe the parents, you know, the sisters in one corner and the brothers in one corner and with the pastors and all. So we were discussing about, you know, why our children, why our youth are not coming in our church and why they are mingling with the, the worldly people and why they are not I mean, thinking about what are the, the Bible values and the divine values and they are going out of the church sometimes, you know, some, some churches. So what is the reason for that? You know, we were discussing many things and uh, I, I told them that, you know, that 
I mean, uh, a correction and that, I mean, advice should uh, happen first in the family. First in the family, you know. When we start, the parents are starting that advice and that, uh, I mean, pray for, uh, pray for the children and pray for the youth. When we are starting in the, in the house, I mean, that will spread it to the church. And uh, that will, you know, when, when, when the children are going out to the society, when they will see the result of that. I mean, so it, this is the thing that I, I was just thinking about. Now, why our children, why the Christian children are going out of the church and they are going away from the presence of God? You know, many a times they are not able to, I mean, they are not able to experience the presence of God in their personal life. I mean, so this morning, I was just thinking that when I talk about the, the Christian youth in a, in, a, in a compromising world, we should understand many other things, you know. This may not be a, a, a great message or something, but I mean, in a, in a, in maybe in a method of I mean, class. Okay, so we will move on. You know, what we have to understand about our children and our youth. You know, Christian youth in a compromising world is, is a particular thing that we should understand. That, you know, in a co this is a compromising world. A compromising world means, you know, the world is trying, the worldly pleasures are trying to compromise with the children of Christian children. Okay, so that means there are many other things that we have to understand that the Christians and the Christian youths are in this society, you know, they have many challenges and they are, I mean, compelled to compromise with many other worldly things of this world. I mean, so that's the reason, you know, we can understand, you know, there are some youth, they are asking some questions uh, to the pastors and to the elders or maybe uh, to, the, to the preachers. You know, there are some people asking uh, a question, uh, uh, is is that okay? That that means you know uh, maybe uh, okay uh, maybe one example okay I, I, the, the abortion is uh, sin is abortion is sin okay so some people are asking uh, is uh, the the love marriage is sin eh? small questions okay if somebody is asking is smoking sin smoking is a sin you know so what is our answer for that when they are asking some question. Okay, just like maybe uh, the, the, the gay marriage is right or not. Is it biblical? Okay, homosexuality is uh, I mean, right or not. Is it biblical? You know, when the people are asking question, and, and, and again, one more thing. You know, some youths are asking, is it, uh, I mean, okay that we place or, I mean, make some tattoos on the body? Tattoo huh? the tattoo? These all the questions are there for the youth from where they are getting the answer. You know, understand one thing, you know, I, I can give you one verse. Maybe I cannot give you, I mean, all the exact verses for all the questions because, you know, it is not exactly written. Okay, you should not smoke. It is not written in the Bible, you know. The, Today, the youths are asking the same question. Is it written in the Bible exactly? Do not smoke. Is it written in the Bible? Do not drink. Is it written in the Bible? Don't go for the placing of the tattoos on the body. Is it written? Is it written? Yes, it is written in the Bible. About the tattoo. Is it Bible in the Bible? Leviticus, take. Okay, uh, Leviticus chapter uh, 9, sorry, 19. Leviticus chapter 19, verse uh, 28. Read that. Mm. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Okay, what is that? Do you know cut your bodies? Ah. Mm. Or put tattoo marks on yourself. What is that? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Mm. Mm. Ah. 
may well patcha guttirud okay so you can maybe explain in or interpret in uh, different ways that words at the same time my question is you know there are many things fundamental things are in the bible there are many things that may not be exactly written in the bible then you should not do that you should do this all those things okay it is not exactly written in the bible but at the same time as we are the christian children we should understand what is the fundamentals of the bible and we should understand what is the principles of the bible you know we are not the, the christian youths are not just like the worldly people they are separated from the world and they are being in the society to to testify jesus into the other people into the world so that is the reason we should understand you know there are many things which is written in bible but there may not be having exact bible words for defending some of the questions of the children but at the same time i'm not talking about you know our our children are also asking some i mean sometimes they are also asking some kind of question for their understanding okay and sometimes they are asking for for others that means when the other people are asking a question to them they are asking you know my children ask me when when the other people when they, the worldly people are worldly children are asking the questions to them and they are asking me and what can i give the answer for those people that is different okay giving answer for the other people that means the the society people the the the, the worldly people that is different at the same time what is the answer for our children you know for for the christian children we should understand what to do and what not to do that means we should know the fundamental doctrines and fundamental i mean biblical values of the bible you know many a times our children are failure because they do not understand what is the fundamental doctrines and fundamental biblical values of the bible and the and the christian hallelujah so that's the reason i'm going to talk about you know the second thing is you know we we will be talking about all these things in uh, in few minutes and the second second slide and uh, yeah that is why christian youth compromise with the world why christian are compromising with the world that is the first question okay first of all we need to understand that what what is the first thing thing that to compromise with the world you know, how our children are compromised with this world first of all we to, we need to understand because of the fear of hurting other people's emotions and losing them you know when our children are going out when our children are in the society let us understand that many a times they are having fear that they may hurt other people's emotions and they may losing the friendship of other people this is one of the important thing that we have to understand you know many times they are going out and they are feeling oh if i say that or if i do that or if i no don't do that you know i may lose my friend i may lose my friend and also they are thinking oh may i you know i i, I may be i mean uh, hurting the feeling of that uh, i mean my, one of my friend their emotion that is the one 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 problem that they are having secondly secondly the fear of exclusion fear of exclusion means you know our children sometimes when they are going to the society sometimes they are excluded from some of the groups the worldly groups le ee loka prakaram ulla aalkarude groupukal undu adinagathu nu ivare endiyum maatti nirthu alle eh avare maatti nu nammada kunnigal endiya avaru maatti nirthu excluding them okay so that's good at the same time you no know, their feeling is why those people are excluding us why they cannot uh, i mean i mean include us also into the group that is a fearful thing and thirdly thirdly identity crisis identity crisis means you know you know many a times you know our children have their own standard and our children has uh, i mean their own identity and they understand that okay, i am a christian mm, maybe i am a i am a pastor's son or i am a pastor's daughter i am a believer's son okay i am a christian when we think about that there is an identity crisis there is an identity crisis at the same time our children when they are going out they are not able to keep their identity this is one of the main main issue that uh, our children are facing in these days and also and also the influence and peer pressure of other people you know when other people are insisting or compelling to do something 
you know they are getting shame and and our children are saying oh they are pressuring us that's a, that's the reason that we did it hmm? you know because of the compulsion of other people the society people you know because of the compulsion force of the other people that means the the worldly people and also because of the i mean influence of the other people the worldly people our children are not able to stand before them and they are failing and they are saying we are we can also join with those people the worldly people you know for example let me tell you one thing about the 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 history which is written in uh, numbers chapter 22 that is you know balam and uh, uh, balak let balam and balak so balam was a prophet of god balam was a prophet of god at the same time, Barak was a, 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 a king, Moabite king. Okay, Moabite king. So no, the, the problem is there, you know, Barak was asking uh, uh, Balaam, the prophet, that you come with me and just curse the, the people of Israel. Okay, he was calling him. At the same time, the problem was, he was saying, no, no, I cannot come. I cannot come. I cannot curse the people of Israel because they are the people of God. You know, again and again, because of the influence of the Balak and influence of the other people and he finally he went with them. You know, most of the time our children also are influenced by the worldly people. Many a times they are influenced by the worldly people and they are not able to overcome the influences of the other people. And also, next thing, you know, yeah, that, 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 was, the, that was the thing that we understand. Okay, and the next slide. No, because of the lack of time, I'm just I mean, running a little fast. We will understand all these things and it is very clear. You know, okay. How can we overcome this influence? Okay. How our children can overcome the influences of this world? Okay. The first thing is by having the right knowledge about the Bible values. Okay. So our children, we know that our children, okay, the Sunday school children and the teenagers and the young adults, we all, we all know that our children are separated from the world. So, we They should have the right knowledge about the Bible values. You know, about the Bible when we study, we have a standard of the Bible, right? We have a standard of the Bible. You know, whatever they, that they are doing and whatever we are doing and whatever we are involved, I mean, we should understand what is the standard of the Bible. You know, we cannot allow everything. We cannot allow everything. So, okay, for example, if they are asking, is it, uh, I mean, smoking is smoking, is, is a sin or is it biblical? You know, it, is it written there? What would be our answer? Man, it is not written that you should not smoke. But there is a verse that it says that you are the temple of uh, your body is the temple of God. Then if you are destroying that body, okay, if you are destroying that body, that, that means you are destroying the temple of God. Okay, so when we think in that way, we understand how much we must be holy in the presence of God. How much we are separated from the worldly things. Amen. So the thing that we, had, we should understand that we, they should have the right knowledge about the Bible values and also they should have the right knowledge about the principles of God. You know, God has placed some of the principles in the Bible. You know, God is guiding with his Holy Spirit and God is guiding every person with the word of God. You know, when a person is reading the Bible and when the person is understanding the principle of God, when a youth is understanding clearly about uh, the, the, the principles of God, how to live in this wretched world, how to live in this corrupted world, when, when those people are getting that understanding about the principle of God and that person will be leading a wonderful life among the, among the corrupted, I mean, worldly people. And that person will be a Christian, real Christian, real Christian, separated for the Lord, separated for the Lord. And again, you know, when we are having a right determination, we will overcome the compromising and influencing world. We should have the determination, the right determination. You know, our children sometimes, 
they are not able to take a decision they are not able to take a determination they are not able to i mean decide something is it is it okay that if i if i do that or is it okay that i'm i'm not doing that you know our children are confused sometimes you know for example you can you can you can read in the book of daniel about daniel and sandrak and meshak and uh, abednego all those people were i mean standing alone and they were standing for the lord in their crisis hallelujah praise the lord think about daniel you know daniel was not ready to i mean obey the command of the king he was not ready to i mean worship and offer the worship i mean in front of the idol he was not ready to i mean offer the i mean his worship i mean in front of a in front of a statue and he was saying no i cannot do that you know they were standing stern and they were standing firm in the presence of god and that determination should have our children also that's we understand and go about when shadrach meshach and abednego they understood that when they are the hebrew people you know when they were in babylonian captivity daniel understood and shadrach meshach and abednego they understood that okay, they should have a correct and right decision they should have a right determination that i will not or we will not worship the worldly god the, the pagan god because our god is a living god hallelujah how I many of you believe that amen how I many of you are praying for your children you know as they are going outside i mean as they are going out of the church and as they are going to the society i mean let them understand that okay they are serving a living god hallelujah hallelujah they are serving a living god and we should understand that when they are having a right determination they will be able to overcome the influence of this world and again when they are having the intimate sorry the right intimacy with god they will overcome the influence of this world you know always you know the the world is influencing the influencing our children the world is always influencing our children with many other things at the same time when they are having a close connection with god when they are having an intimacy with god that means the connection with god matters in in a christian's life you know many a times we have many questions at the same time you know all your questions will be answered when you are sitting in the presence of god when you are connected to god when you are connected to the bible you have the answer for that but whatever the question is you have the answer for your questions from the bible from the lord i mean from the holy spirit because you are guided by the holy spirit hallelujah so sit in the presence of god keep that connection with god the almighty god and your questions will be answered you know so our connection you know for example let me tell you one thing you know we have wifi connection in our, all our houses okay and uh, when sometimes uh, we feel that okay, we are not getting the strong connection with the wifi uh, in some places some areas of our house right you know i i had the same problem earlier you know when i was uh, i mean sitting in the inside room i was not getting a strong connection with the wifi but uh, I mean, when i was i mean sitting in the in the in the living room i should uh, get the, the the strong connection with my wifi now what is the problem you know you know the router is in the living room the router is in the living room and we are sitting away from that we are sitting in the bedroom or we are sitting in the i mean next room and the router is in the living room but if you are sitting in the living room you are getting the connection with the wifi because you have a close intimacy and you have a close connection with the wifi router the same thing is happening in our christian life also many a times you know we are disconnected with the from the presence of god when our youths are disconnected with the from the presence of god because of many reasons they have many reasons they are busy at the same time if my youngsters in our church men the children i mean teen teenagers let me ask you one question you know how much time you are spending in the presence of god with the bible and god how much time you are spending in a day you know our our family parents should give them the the, the advice for our children that when I mean, you should spend in time spend time in the presence of god with the bible reading bible meditating bible and also that is the duty of the parents you know when you are compelling them when you are forcing them they may not be accepting first time but they will do that later you know the reason is when we are connected with god 
when our youngsters are connected with god always men so that will happen and that changes will be happening in the life of our children in the coming days hallelujah again again you know when we have the right guidance of the holy spirit see ee parishuddhaatmavinte oru guidance nammada kunnangalkku illengile avarku ee logathu jeevikkan pattathilla to illa budhimuttulla kaariya no when they are and under the guidance of the holy spirit they will be guided in a right way they will be guided in a proper way and you know? so we have to pray for them so that they will have the right guidance of the holy spirit wherever they are going whatever they are doing I mean whatever the things that we are involved palapolum avare idavidunnadai pala karyangalilum avarku endu cheyanam ariyada avaru paarippedugiyana confused aanu namukku avarku vendi prarthikkam kartavai parishuddhaatmavinte or guidance avade mel kartav vaikkaname hallelujah and again the next thing the last one is the right fellowship with the spiritual people you know if our youngsters are having or our kids are having a right fellowship with the spiritual people you know most of the time they are out of the family they are out of the church and they are mingling with other people at the same time what they are doing there they are having the fellowship and they are having the communion with the worldly people or worldly friends but understand one thing whenever you are getting a time whenever you are getting a chance come back to the lord sit with the people those who are i mean spiritual and sit with those sp- spiritual people and get something from them and sit in the presence of god I mean attend in the prayer meeting i mean all the meetings you know you should not i mean neglect any of the meetings you know i know that uh, our children they are uh, i mean away from us but as much as possible you can join from there in zoom okay if you are free there in home or in your room join from there in zoom because I mean the fellowship that you are getting with the people of god the fellowship that you are getting with the the spiritual people of our church I mean that is a worth for you I mean that is a blessing for you I mean so if you are having that spiritual fellowship with the spiritual people I mean you will be able to overcome the influence of this world I mean and the next slide and the next slide is do not compromise bible values for a temporary gains okay this is very important to understand you know youngsters all our children sunday school kids teenagers remember very i mean very importantly understand one thing that do not do not compromise bible values for temporary gains okay for example i was uh, thinking about uh, the same person the balam and uh, balak okay so prophet balam and balak okay there are few things which is written there you know what is our courtesy and what is our responsibility uh, when we are in this uh, i mean i mean corrupted world okay think about you know the best example is that the prophet balam you know when the world is influencing us when the world is influencing our youth what should be our responsibility what is that in uh, numbers chapter 22 we are <coughs> reading many things and uh, i'm just taking listen you know the, the assigned task for bala was to curse israel okay that is very clear huh? the assigned task there is a task when we are doing something when the other people are influencing us when the worldly people are influencing us the task is there what is the, what was the task which was given for bala hmm? cursing the people of israel right cursing the people of israel and who was the assigner balak who was the assigner balak who was balak <clears throat> is the king of moab and who is the assignee balam the prophet balam the prophet who was balam balam was a prophet from the gendal background gendal background later he became a fraud prophet and and he became what do you can you can say uh, i mean uh, um, what is that uh, perverted prophet perverted prophet means you know he was a good prophet before you know later he became a perverted prophet and uh, he 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 was okay that we will discuss maybe one another day okay there are many many things about all those things and there is no time for that listen asaini is the balam the prophet and what is the re- what is the re- reward after the completion of the task it is very clearly written there take a picture of that if you have no time to write down all those points okay take a picture of that okay listen you know they were getting you know we we have no time to read also okay in chapter 22 verse 7 we are reading that 
you know, he was offered something, a feast for divination. Okay, a feast for divination. Can you read that verse in Malayalam maybe? <clears throat> what is the reward which was offered for Bala? That means you have a task. You have a task. And if you are doing that task, there is a reward for you. See, this is the kind of influence that we are getting from this world. This is the what was that? I mean, uh, what was that reward which was uh, I mean, in front of Balaam? A feast for divination. And then we have Prasna Dachina Gurthana. Dachina Gurthana. Prasna Dachina Gurthana. Okay. Dachina Gurthana. Okay. 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 Ah, King Bala Bala Adi Okay, secondly, in chapter 22, verse 17, we are reading that Balak is saying, You would get whatever you ask. You would get whatever you ask. So, what was the reward for cursing Israel? Or what was the reward if you are compromising with the Balak and the Moabites? Eh? Whatever you ask, we will give you. No time to read all those verses. In verse 18, 22 verse 18, what is the offer? The house full of silver and gold. The house full of silver and gold. Okay. Again, in 22 chapter, chapter 22 verse 40, what is that? The oxen and the sheep as a gift. This is very important to understand. You know, Barak or Balak and the Moabites were, I mean, giving more and more and more offer for the Balaam prophet. But first of all, he was not ready for that. But later he agreed. He was praying in the presence of God. God said, don't go, don't go, don't go. You are making compromise with the world. The Gentile people, you don't go there. I mean, be here. I mean, be separated. Don't go there. Again, he is asking, Okay, shall I go? Shall I go? Shall I go? Shall I go? Hello. I mean, the Imam, 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 the so this is the thing that had happened with Balaam also. Remember, let's come back to the point. You know, what happens to the children? What happens to the youth of our church? I mean, when they are going out outside the church and when they are going to the society, you know, there are many things which is influencing our children. There are many things which is influencing and compromising with our children. So how can we, I mean, how can we, I mean, overcome all the influences that you, we understand that uh, the result of Balaam's mistake was Moab seduced Israelites and they compromised with the Moabites. Amen. So this is what happening in the Christianity also when they are going outside, the youth are going outside, but it is our responsibility as parents, we are going to pray for our children. We are going to pray for our children. We are going to pray for our youth. Young adults, hallelujah, let them have a right determination in their life. Let them have a right, I mean, close and connection, intimate connection with, uh, I mean, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us all, I mean, stand up in the presence of God and we are going to pray for all our children. Hallelujah. I mean, focus uh, all, all your children. I mean, those who are standing here. I mean, all your children, all your, I mean, youngsters and all the teenagers, I mean, focus them and pray for them. What to pray? All these things that we are going to speak. Okay, we are going to speak all these words and we are going to pray for all of our children. Hallelujah. Let's all, I mean, I mean, stretch out your, I mean, uh, your hands upon all these children. Hallelujah. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for them. Amen. Hallelujah. What are we going to pray? Let us pray for our youth and kids. Hallelujah. That let them have the right knowledge about Bible values. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Master, we are bringing our children in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let them have the right knowledge about the Bible values of God. Let them have the right knowledge about the principles of God, Father. Hallelujah. And Lord, let them, I mean, that let them, I mean, have right determination about our lives, oh Lord. Hallelujah. That let them have a right intimacy with God, oh Father. Hallelujah. And let them have the right fellowship with spiritual people, oh Father. Hallelujah. Let them, I mean, let them not come compromise Bible values for the temporary, I mean, gains of Father. Hallelujah. That uh, let them overcome the influence of this world. Hallelujah. There are many areas that, uh, I mean, our children are, I mean, influenced by. Hallelujah. There are many, I mean, forcing, I mean, factors are there that uh, influencing them uh, to, to, be uh, to be, I mean, compromised with this world and worldly things. Hallelujah. And let us pray that, I mean, God will bless them. Hallelujah. Yes, Master, we pray for all of our children. We pray for all of our youngsters of Father. Bless them abundantly. Lord, hallelujah, amen, so that uh, there will be a fruitful, I mean, vessel in the hands of God in the coming days of Father, hallelujah, help them, oh God, help them, oh God, to, I mean, overcome the influences of this world of Father, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, Master, we are bringing them in the mighty hand of God, we bless them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of Father, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, hearing a prayer of God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, shall we all sit in the presence of God, and uh, we are going to sing Malayalam song, and taking the offering now.